Shalom. It's Falling Yeshua. Welcome again to the Rock. Seed harvesting. We harvest our own seeds. For those who don't know, here on the Rock, um, I intentionally allow seeds to go, or plants to go to seed, just so that I can harvest the seed. I, mean, I do eat the food, but then I get to harvest the seed. Uh, for instance, uh, Right here, right now, and I have many gardens right now that are in seed. So for those of you that were interested in buying seeds, just know that we do. So this is one of my gardens right here. These are beet seeds right here. You can see the beets in there. And you can see all the seed pods forming. We have mustard seeds in here. We have lettuce seeds. You'll see uh, see this plant right here. That's a, a Swiss chard. And Swiss chard and beets are biennial, so they go to seed every other year. We have lettuce that's going to seed. We have sensation lettuce that's going to seed. We have, I don't know what the heck that is, because I can't remember what I planted there. That's going to seed. You see some of the lettuces that are tall that are going to seed. So we harvest our own seed. Uh, this is just one of my gardens. Look at this one right here. This is cilantro. This is third generation cilantro that has gone to seed. We harvest our own. Uh, you see some of the other seed starts that I got coming in right now. This is one of my four seed starting areas. This is the, I got a lot of people who said they like that uh, pink jumbo banana squash. That's that. They'll be transplanting that soon. But anyways... I, I could show you my other garden that I let go to seed, but I ain't going that far. So it's a Swiss chard garden that I let go to seed. <coughs> but so this is a one turnip right here, one turnip plant. One. Let's see, you see the turnip right there. The turnip, and this is the amount of seed that I got from that one turnip plant. Look at this. So, for those who have never seen the process, you know, uh, when you do not harvest your plant and you leave it in your garden, which I would advocate you do that for at least one of your plants every year. One plant per whatever you're planting. So, if you're planting red leaf lettuce, leave one of your red leaf lettuce plants in the garden. Do not pull it up. If you're planting lost and kale, like I have some right now, leave that, leave one plant, let it go to seed. Uh, turnips. Uh, mustards, collards, uh, whether it be vates or Georgia or any purple tree collard, whatever kind of collard, whatever kind of plant that you are planting. Green beans, I mean, for green beans, maybe you, you want to, you know, let them, you know, maybe a whole plant worth of green beans or two plants. But all you do is you leave it in the soil. It'll get tall. It'll grow flowers. The flowers will get pollinated. And then the pod... You know, for greens, they'll develop these pods, or for turnips, they'll grow pods that look like this. You let them dry out, and then when they're dried out, they'll look like this. This one right here. Uh, right here, they'll look like that. And inside of it, once it's dried, oh, I don't know if you caught that, but there's little seeds in there. And these seeds are what the stores sell you. So instead of going to the store every single year and buying seeds, you can harvest your own. Now, if you do want to buy seeds, obviously you can come to, you know, let me know and, and I, I sell plenty of seeds. But this is my, uh, how I harvest them. This is my, this is third generation uh, turnip. Now, I don't know what kind of turnip it is. It could be purple top. It could be yellow. It could be white. No clue because I didn't label it. But um, these are the amount of seeds that you will gather so what i do is i just i'll put the whole plant into this tart which is it's inside one of those right there you can see kind of the frame of it so i sink the tarp in there put the plant in there and just you know basically kind of just do this with the plant and um it'll all this stuff will fall off the seeds the pods will break open and then once I'm done, I'll have a whole pile of this mixed with the seed. I then I just simply grab this, run it through my screen. The seeds fall through. 
and uh, most of the pods are caught. Now, you're not going to harvest every single seed. You know, again, this is one plant. This is one plant with the seeds. Look at this. One plant. So you're going to have plenty of seeds. If you do two plants or three plants, you'll have seeds to give away or to sell or to help others, you know, who are gardening. You know, uh, it's just a very easy process to do. Uh, that's enough seed right there for me to sell. Uh, I, I do have three more plants, though. But, you know, more sales. People bought a lot of this uh, last year when I was selling it. So, but the problem is I don't know what kind of turnip it is. So, I can't even advertise it's this kind of turnip. I, I may just sell these as a turnip surprise. You'll be surprised what turnip it is because I was surprised what turnip it was. Because I still don't know what kind of turnip it is. <laughs> But it's that simple to harvest those. Just me, Ebony, and uh, Chubby, or Tavia. We were all out here. Uh, took us about, what, 10, 15 minutes? Yes, ma'am. 10, 15 minutes. This, we're going to get to the uh, chickens, because the chickens will eat these pods open, the green ones, and it provides them with protein. Here, there's some more pods that we did not harvest. You see the brown? You probably will end up busting these open. See how they're brown? That's when they're ready to be harvested. So, and the, ad the advantage of harvesting your seeds, along with the fact that it's just cheaper, you know, you have your own seed, is every year, every generation, a seed grows in a particular type of soil. It acquires the strengths of the previous generation seed. For those of us that are of the faith, that should, I mean, this is why Yah says, that, you know, he, he, this is why he, Tell us not to hate husbandry. There's so much to learn from. This is why his his parables, Ashua's parables, were agricultural. This is why our ancients, our forefathers, were agricultural. That you pass your information to the next generation, as fathers, as mothers. Well, the same way, these plants pass down their information, how to survive in this soil. The strengths, the weaknesses. I always stress my plants out a little bit, you know, during the summer where I won't water them a little longer so that it, they acquire the ability to, to survive without as much water. So you can actually make a drought tolerant plant by not harvesting the seeds immediately or stressing the plant out a little bit by not giving it water. It's going to pass that down to its it, it, uh, it, that information into the seed. So the next generation seeds you have are actually a bit more drought tolerant. I know that because I've done it with many of my plants. And it works. So these, you know, when you get to your third generation of a plant, it knows how to survive in that soil. Instead of it knowing how to survive, you know, let's say you go to your store, you buy your seeds and they come from uh, California. Well, out here, this is in California. No, this is the Ozarks. The soil's different. The climate's different. The heat is different. The rain is different. You want a plant that's, that, that is uh, acclimated to your area. So this is how you do it. You harvest your own seed year after year, and you won't have so many dud seeds. These seeds, these turnips made up through the winter. And we had snow here. So uh, uh, now that they've made it through the winter, they're going to also be a little bit more cold hardy. So now I, I'm, I'm creating a plant just by planting it and harvesting the seed and knowing that the plant's passing down the information down. I'm having a plant that's cold hardy and heat tolerant. Men, that's a lesson for us. I mean, I know this had nothing to do with that, but we are charged to pass down information that to our children that'll make our children Sin resistant. Let me not go there. Let me not go there. Let me not go there. You know, well, they'll, 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 they'll learn about this lifestyle and love it. They'll learn to live outside of the parameters of sin. They will live within Yah's law. But that starts off with the first generation to go out there and do it and pass the information down. And by the third generation, you'll have a seed that is cold tolerant or cold uh, uh, hardy and heat resistant or heat tolerant just a little lesson you know but anyways harvest your own seed you know as times get worse in, it, in this world you know uh, i remember when everyone was saying at the store oh my gosh you know they're they're not selling the seeds and the seeds are are are, are, are uh, the shelves aren't packed with them well that should be a lesson it doesn't do 
and it doesn't hurt to leave a couple of seed pods, a couple of pepper po- uh, or uh, peppers on your plant. Let it dehydrate or, 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 or age and let it dehydrate on the plant and then just go harvest some seeds and you got seeds for the next year. Anyways, and when, and when you do it, harvest it from your, your most healthy plant or your biggest green beans um, or your biggest bell peppers. Don't get the diseased bell peppers and try to... Uh, uh, Keep those seeds for the next year because just like it's just like all things. Do you really want seeds from a diseased plant? Get the most healthy plant. Get the most healthy green bean plant. Get the most healthy, you know, kohlrabi or or, or collard plant, and let that go to seed. Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling on too much. Seeds. Hallelujah. Bless y'all. Shalom.